Welcome to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Welcome back to the Craftsman USA Ratchet History Project. Cranking out the title ad nauseum every time. <laughs> so the ratchets that you see before you, if you've been around for the last 30 so years, you should be familiar with these because with as ubiquitous as the Craftsman brand is in the United States, a lot of guys, a lot of gals have Craftsman tools, maybe one or two and at least and this ratchet has had a fairly long run compared to its predecessors and its successors. It isn't the longest lasting one but it's, it's had a pretty long run. So I'm going to say two disclaimers before we move forward. One, I've tried filming this one a few times. I felt that the quality on some of my tries wasn't as great as it could have been. And two, uh, the reason why I've <laughs> tried to do this video a few times already is that I had difficulty getting this film under 30 minutes. Typically it's at or around that. And I'm trying to be conscientious when I do these to preserve and respect everyone's time. But I'm assuming that at this point, if you're coming here, you're coming to learn anyways. And even still, I still try to respect your time. Uh, but this is gonna be a bit of a journey. It's gonna be much like the stainless steel ratchet, uh, the video that I've already released before these. And uh, we're just gonna have to roll with it. So grab a bowl of popcorn, Grab a drink, fold some laundry, grab a book, I don't know, whatever you want to do to listen to this in the background, what have you. Either way, I don't care as, as long as you're here to learn. It's fine with me. So, the problem that I ran into with these ratchets, as with other Sears Craftsman ratchets, is that Sears has a bit of a reputation to not name the ratchets with a distinguishable name that vastly separates some of the ratchets unless it has a unique physical feature or attribute. A lot of the ratchets in the history are just called ratchet wrench or just wrench. So that leaves me in a precarious position because I had a series of goals when I started this project and one was to identify a specialized name for the Craftsman Ratchet if it had one given by Sears. Two, if that wasn't available, could I find a commonly used name amongst the community? Well, with these ratchets, it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. And if some of my forum threads that I've created thus far have proven to me is that it's going to be difficult to instill a a nomenclature when either A, one has not been established, or B, certain communities already call it by a certain name anyways. And given that, I either have to assign an appropriate name myself or try to go with the community or amalgamate it appropriately in regards to the rest of the ratchets that are in the timeline. For example, some folks have called these the teardrop ratchets seems to make enough sense. However, some folks call the predecessor ratchet, <laughs> this ratchet right here, some have referred to this one as the teardrop. So it gets a little precarious, a little confusing, and given that I've had to make a judgment call. So I've gone ahead and decided to call these just the teardrop quick release ratchets and then these guys because Sears specifically calls this ratchet just quick release ratchet and that's the first time that that terminology is ever used I'm gonna call this guy quick release ratchet when we go back to it and do its own video these will be the teardrop quick release ratchets now to f further complicate things I've designated a specific position in the timeline in regards to these, this guy, and the other ratchets that came before this point. 
And why I decided to do that and clump certain ratchets together in a group is because they exemplify a design and mechanism philosophy. They are essentially ancestors of one another. And based on what was created in the USA Craftsman timeline, these guys right here represent the end of a generation. And their position relative to everybody else is number four. So I've also designated these as the fourth generation raised panel ratchet. So when I talk about these in regards to their position in the timeline, I will just call them the fourth generation raised panel ratchets. But when I'm talking about them in the teardown video or this video, I'm going to call them the teardrop quick release ratchets. So in reference to time, they're the fourth generation, but in reference to themselves, they're just the teardrop. So I apologize for any kind of confusion. If you wanna if you wanna file your grievances on the on the discussion, go right ahead. Otherwise, you're just gonna have to put your big boy pants on or big girl pants on and deal with it. <laughs> because uh, despite the fact that I've requested help in uh, in trying to position some of these things, I haven't really received a lot of help. So I'm again I'm doing the best that I can. So let's get cracking. Let's get right into the actual history about these guys. So these ratchets in general made their first appearance in the 1992 Sears catalog. The quarter inch was offered for $13.99, 3 eighths at $16.99, and half inch at $18.99. The last time these guys, the standard three, made an appearance was in the digital Sears catalog in 2011, at least as far as them being made in the United States. Quarter inch was $12.99, 3 eighths at $15.99, and half inch at $22.99. So we have a bit of an anomaly. Despite their longevity in the tool lineup, the price went down or just went up slightly. We'll get into that in a little bit. Now you'll notice that over on this side, we've got an additional ratchet that we don't see over here. This guy is the long handled version of the 3 eighths. It made its appearance in 1995 and it was offered for $14.99 the final price being $17.99. Now why do I have these grouped like this? Well, this side represents kind of the end of an era for the producers or at least one producer of the Craftsman ratchets and other tools, whereas this side represents the company that still makes them to this day, albeit it's through their Chinese division. So these guys over here are from the era of Danaher, and then these guys right here are from the very bleeding edge of when Eastco was still making ratchets on behalf of Sears as they were being absorbed into the Danaher Corporation over here. Are there differences? Well, if you look, you might notice that there's a little bit of a color anomaly right here versus these guys. We'll go ahead and get into that in just a second. Let's go ahead and show you the, the goods as far as product numbers. So we've got quarter inch, quarter inch is 44807. 3 eighths is 44811 and the big guy is 44809 and the extended length version of the 3 eighths is 44808 and if memory serves me correctly all the numbers are consistent with each other which is positive <laughs> so when you're looking for a repair kit at least as far as the United States ratchets are concerned you have a reference point that should work for all of the American made ones. I can't always say that moving backward so that's positive. Now if you take a look here we'll just go ahead and grab the quarter inches just to use as an example. 
So, it was common to a degree for Eastco for their first releases to have the little, I just called them flags on the side of the craftsman name. And the later ones to be missing that. Let's go ahead and flip it over. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of a difference in design. Got a much thicker sidewall here than with the later version. We've got forged in the USA and just the USA. If there's one thing I can tell you about these ratchets just in general is that as I stated with the stainless steel crafts and ratchets I kind of made a reference to saying that um, these ra the stainless steel ratchets kind of represented the, the end of an era of Sears getting a little bit more gimmicky, quality is starting to be questioned. Uh, these ratchets, to a degree, suffer from the same malady, unfortunately, in reputation. If you take a look at the lower guy here, you'll see that there is what looks like copper on the selector and the push or quick release, whereas up here, uh, there's no evidence of that. And the reason is, is that when these were first issued the quick release and the selector switch were made of metal and later iterations just had plastic so what this is is this is wear from the paint that was put on the selector and quick release and it's just coming off to reveal the the plating that's underneath it now as time went on sears started to request cost-saving measures for these ratchets so you start to find hybrids as time goes on we'll just put these guys down for a second we'll grab a 3 8 so what this is is this is an original got the flags first first couple years release of the teardrop crass and ratchet here metal selector metal quick release and this one's kind of in between it, it came like this I didn't oh man I didn't go through the effort of putting this selector in here just to prove a point or anything like that it came like this this one has and this one is the one that I've owned <laughs> forever um, this one has a metal selector with a plastic quick release and this one's plastic and plastic so as time went on my suspicion is that Sears was saying hey Danaher we we need to save some money on these what can we do so they first started with the quick release which realistically uh, I, I don't think that that's too much of an issue as far as the longevity or functionality of the ratchet itself uh, but when they switched over to the plastic selector anecdotally I've read plenty of reports saying that the selectors are prone to snap off and in conjunction with some problems with the internals of the later issues of these ratchets it just kind of made the situation worse. Yeah, Sears is saving some money themselves by cutting costs with using cheaper materials, but people are starting to warranty them more because the materials aren't up to snuff. And since we're on the subject of cost cutting, uh, when I was tearing these down, especially on this side, uh, you know, being a former metallurgist, I'm not necessarily saying I have Superman vision and I could x-ray everything. But just handling it, the pawls, I just from my own experience, they, they certainly seem to follow the, the lineage of the predecessors. The pawls are forged. And with these guys, I can't confirm it. I haven't done the metallurgy test on it. But some of them seem almost as if they're sintered metal. 
which isn't a really great option for durability and longevity on a tool that its job is rugged. You know, this is that's fundamentally this isn't a baby doll or a, a plastic toy. Uh, these tools are meant to go to work, and if that evaluation that I'm thinking is going on is true, uh, yeah, Sears again is saving some money but is it necessarily doing it in the best way? Anecdotally, I've read some reports that folks have had their pulls basically shatter or crush underneath the force that they're applying to to whatever fastener that they're using these things on and it just can't take the heat and, and crunches. So that's a bit about the alignment of these ratchets. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's uh, talk about what else was offered in the family of these particular ratchets? So, long before we got to this point, the predecessors of these teardrops offered flex heads, and that is certainly the case here. So we've got a big half inch flex head. It's kind of nice as if you look at this, at just the right angle you can see the milling in it, which is pretty cool. This guy is 44816. Let's put him here. Bada boom. And we've got the 3 8 This one is 44815. And then we have a bit of an anomaly. Oh yes, quarter inch. What the heck? <laughs> yeah, and it's got a pretty strange number compared to its brothers. It's four four nine, or I should say four nine nine five one. Sorry about that. So what the heck? Actually, and another thing before we move on, take a look at this. Where's all the brothers? Have quick release. What? I didn't just put this gear in here for funsies or anything like that. When you buy these, or you're looking for one, uh, don't be alarmed that you don't see quick release. It's it's done like that on purpose. My suspicion is it's done as a counter a countermeasure for cost. Because since these this particular ratchet is made at the very very end of the Craftsman USA timeline. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. I, my suspicion is is that they just use a Matco slash Armstrong gear pull set for this. So we've got big big half inch guy right here, all half inch flex. First offered in 1998 for 29.99, three eighths at 19.99, and their final appearance we've got. Half inch at $32.99 and three eighths at $20.99. So just a couple bucks increase in price. Quarter inch. This is a doozy. From what I can tell, I didn't find this in, in the catalogs. Couldn't find it anywhere unless I'm a dope and I can't read or I can't see. I mean, I've been staring at this stuff for a long, long time, and we know sometimes when you look at stuff for too long, you get a little bit of tunnel vision. But, again, anecdotally, I had read that this had made its first appearance approximately 2010, and the price was a bit staggering. Quarter inch, $39.99, initial and final price. So, whoa, a lot more expensive than its brother's. So, my suspicion for cost savings is probably in alignment with, with this guy right here. Uh, as far as Sears and Dan here saying, okay, you know, we're going to release this. It's going to have a really high price. Let's just use what we've got already to <laughs> shave what little price we can. And we'll just use our Matco Armstrong gear and Paul Pack and we'll be good. We'll be good. <laughs> so yeah uh, the repair kits for that little guy no quick release so don't freak out the Chinese versions that came after this and still exist to this day they do have quick release 
So it's a little bit of a des different design there. All of these ratchets, every single one, sports a 36 tooth gear with a three tooth engagement per side pull that offers you 10 degrees of arc swing. It's the same for every single size. Because I'm lame and apparently have no life, I went ahead and counted it to just confirm it, and yeah, it's true. Again, ad nauseum. Each one of these is made of molybdenum steel with a nickel chrome plating that offers high corrosion, tarnish, and wear resistance. They're drop forged to increase strength at points of stress, heat treated, oil quenched, and tempered to uniformly prevent interior soft spots. Yikes. <laughs> And, um, in my personal opinion, having had some of these for a while, I've had these guys hold up a little bit worse off than, say, the predecessor that I've shown before. These guys, these guys seem to hold up in terms of their mechanism, durability, and their chrome seems to hold up better than, than these, so... In my opinion, the East Co ratchets, these older ones, hold up. I mean, look at them, they look pretty good. Whereas these guys, I, I have a whole slew of these and I get anomalous rust and all this kind of stuff. Whereas these, I've hardly done anything to in the time that I've had them and boom, you know. So, I don't know if the chroming was also thinned out over time to save money. Sears is pulling out all the stops to save money. <laughs> Which isn't necessarily a good thing. These were patented originally under East Code Tools, just barely before they merged with the Danaher Corporation. In my personal opinion, these are easier to repair than, than these guys. These guys take a lot more effort and a bit more skill. Because if we zoom in on this ratchet, we've got a retention clip. And front and back, whereas with these, we've got a snap ring. So all you have to do to get to the internals is literally squeeze the snap ring, pull by the socket stud here, and boom, you're good. You've got access. So in terms of the design, I, I would say that it's an improvement. Those snap rings are thick, whereas some of those retention clips on the ratchet I just shown sometimes have a tendency to warp and if you've ever done ratchet surgery on these or similarly created ratchets it's a bitch to to get in there without doing some serious surgery so we've got different derivatives here's one of them we've got the 75th anniversary gold ratchet it's the same as the long-handled version over here, same serial number of 44808. If you use this as a tool and warranty it, you will get a standard 3 8 long-handled version. And since I have, have it, I'll show you. Actually, you know what? Here, let me go ahead and show you for comparative purposes. This is another 3 8 that I have. This is the Craftsman Industrial version. And it seems as if this one is slightly hardier than, say, a standard 3 8 See, the neck has got some beef to it. The handle isn't as rounded. I kind of like this a little bit better. So, does the cost of this in addition to what a standard ratchet would cost? Is it, is it justified? I'm not really sure. I've only had this for a short period of time and it was given to me as a gift from one of the viewers of this series, so I thank you very much for that. Time will tell, how does it hold up? All right. So, we've already talked about how the first iterations of these had the metal quick release and the selector. As time went on, they both became made of plastic. There's crafts and industrial versions, as we've already seen. There are also black oxide versions of the crafts and industrial versions. It's supposed to be a protective layer over your ratchet to prevent rust and damage. 
and those are pretty spendy. I considered buying some just to show you, but I think you can use your imagination on that. The ratchets of this type were marred in reputation and in declining quality. The first iterations were typically anecdotally considered pretty good, whereas later versions weren't. In general, most people say that all the United States made versions were better than the current Chinese made ones. The USA versions have a thicker gear and pull and apparently better materials, whereas the Chinese counterparts were thinner. And I, I, can, I can say that to a degree they are uh, a bit thinner in terms of what you get. I'll probably create a separate video just displaying that, but for now, just take my word on it. And there are different derivatives of these ratchets that still exist today and are still sold and made in the United States, which is good. They're under the Allen name, so if you go over to your local fleet farm and mosey on to the tools section, you'll be able to see some ratchets that are strikingly similar to these. And they're still made under the Dan Hare umbrella because they also own the Allen tool name. And they look a little bit different, but it's the same exact internals. It's the same everything. And in fact, you may enjoy those a little bit better because it's actually got a knurled grip if that's your thing. The selector seems to have a little bit of a lower profile design, also made of metal still. So if that's your bag and you miss the boat on these and you like these, and you're saying to hell with craftsmen, you might want to go check them out. And they're actually appropriately priced as well, so you can't really beat that. As far as the lack of price inflation that I mentioned before, that may be due to the quality control cuts that they had to make, and that is probably why these had a bit of a marred reputation over time. And perhaps that contributed uh, to the malignment that people had with these ratchets, and now they're ultimately made in China. I mean, if customers are getting pissed off about your ratchets not being reliable, you're paying more money for them to be made in the United States. You know, Sears probably said, screw it. Let's just make them in China and be done with it. That way they're cheaper for us to repair, and even if they suck a little bit more, it's still cheaper for us to replace. So that's where we're at with that. Let's go ahead and show some kits. So... We've got, and I'll eventually put these in the description. Here's a half inch. For whatever reason, I'm missing the, uh, <laughs> the three eighths. What the hell? And as some have requested, I went ahead and cracked one of these things open. So you get the pieces. But let's go ahead and take a look at the insert because that's the most interesting part. So you get a fairly nice description of how you're supposed to go about repairing your ratchet. A lot more than the earlier versions, I can tell you that. So, that's appreciated. Pretty cool. Just a word of warning, pro tip, if you get a ratchet repair kit for your United States made ratchet that looks like this, ask for the United States made one. They'll always say you made in the USA and have the star. And the kit will have a repair, the CAT number will start with a four always. Whereas the Chinese made ones will start with a three. So pro tip for you there to help you save some aggravation. They are, they're not cross compatible at all. Let's go ahead and take a look at some patents. So this is a patent for the Paul design. It's not necessarily for the exact same design as these, but you have to remember that all of these patents are built off of one another. So if you're interested in learning about the Paul design, go ahead and check out patent number 61349991. Just to kind of take a look, take a gander at what's going on. So these are the basic concepts of the Paul design, how it's supposed to function. 
points of contact. So you get the idea there. Worth a look if this is your this is your thing. I've always been interested in the mechanical aspects of how things work. And here's the original patent for the design. Whoa. This is patent 5178047. And this was originally filed back in 1991. And if you go to the Fleet Farm, like I suggested, this is the design that you're going to see under the Allen brand name. It looks, it's going to look very similar to this with the knurled handle, this little, uh, I don't know, this would be an, an acute angle selector there. Let's go ahead and just page through it real quick. There's the basics of the design. I preferentially would have liked this better under <laughs> the Craftsman brand name, but that's just me. It takes a little bit more effort to do that. So, you get the point. Feel free to reference it if you're interested in learning more about that. And here's the banner, or the, I should say a page from the flyer, or the Sears catalog, I should say, back in 1992. So, we are looking at Ratchet A, and look what it's called, Quick Release Standard Tooth Ratchet. And then if we look at B, which is its predecessor, Oh great, quick release standard tooth ratchet. That, that's real helpful, Sears, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so yeah, it came out in 1992 for $13.99 and that would be the price for the quarter inch. So there you have it, love them or hate them. Whether you have the earlier iterations which seem to be more reliable, a little bit better build quality, or the later ones, uh, this is what it is and this is the last of a generation in terms of both uh, design scheme and mechanism scheme. So it's the fourth, the last in a line of ratchets that came before it. So these are the Craftsman Teardrop Quick Release Ratchets, AKA the fourth generation raised panel. We're still sorry to see you go. No longer being made in the USA.